Hi, I'm Melissa Belote Ripley. I'm Dallas Escobedo. I'm Victoria Jackson. I swam in the 1972 Games in Munich, Germany when I was 15. I was fortunate to go back and swim in the Montreal Games in 1976. I'm a pitcher. I'm the captain. I'm here with Team Mexico Softball. We're in a hotel in Onamichi right now. It is the first time in history that Mexico has a softball team competing in the Olympics, and so we are here making history. I'm a sports historian and clinical assistant professor of history at Arizona State University. I'm a NCAA champion at 10,000 meters and a former professional runner with an endorsement contract with Nike. Which of these sports will be making a return to the Olympics this year? Skateboarding, surfing, softball, climbing, or karate? Uh, I believe it's softball. That was kind of a trick question because some of these sports are new. Well, definitely softball. Is there any other? (laughs) Softball and baseball kind of come off and on the Olympic program, depending on the country that's hosting. So softball is my final answer. (laughs) You got it. (laughs) Softball and baseball will be returning this year. Uh, They were last in the Olympic Games in 2008. Skateboarding, surfing, karate, and competitive climbing are actually all new sports oh, this I didn't year. know about climbing. Interesting. Uh, which sport are you most excited to watch? I think surfing because it's a water sport and I'm kind of drawn to water sports. Surfing um, because it's an indigenous sport. It's a native Hawaiian sport in its origin. Actually, the founding father of modern surfing was an Olympic athlete for the U.S., Duke Kahanamoku. He competed in swimming. And because he was so good, his swim style, other coaches and other competitors wanted to make it illegal because he was too good. I hope that there will be a lot of storytelling around him at the Olympics in Tokyo because he is the reason (laughs) this sport is becoming part of the Olympic program now. True or false, gold medals are mostly made of silver. Do I think that's true? Well, I know that gold medals are mostly made of something other than gold. It would be very funny if they were mostly made of silver, but I feel like it's gonna be like US coinage where it's another metal and that this is another trick question. So I'm gonna go false. They're silver. So it's actually true. Ah. They're mostly made of silver. (laughs) As we always laugh and say, everybody gets a silver medal. (laughs) Gold and bronze are so soft, you'd be able to bend them. One of the first things that I noticed when they put the metal around your neck is, whoa, this is really heavy and it's the silver that gives it the weight. It's the silver that gives it the hardness, so you know we don't have a flexible metal. So yes, yeah, silver. What does it feel like to win a gold medal? I honestly don't think words do the moment justice. There are not words that can describe everything that's going through your head. The first time I got up there, you know, a lot of people cry and, you know, and all sorts of things. I was just like so, looking down the 50 meter pool, which is the way it was in Munich, and seeing the American flag being raised going, wow, they're raising the American flag for me. I'm representing the greatest country on this earth. This is me in our, um, actually it's our marching uniform for opening ceremonies and it's me holding my three gold medals. As you can see, it's not the traditional ribbon. Munich, they use gold, silver, and bronze chains, so when you see that, you automatically know it's a medal from the Munich Olympic Games. Some articles from the Washington Post, and then these are just the teletype that shows the results of different events. This is pretty cool. This is the stadium at opening ceremonies, so that kind of gives you an idea of just some of the stuff in here. I'm curious if you know why Olympians bite their medals. That seems to be a common thing they do. If they win gold, they'll bite the gold. Do you know why that is? Maybe because they know it's made of silver. (laughs) I don't know. I I don't know the the origin story or or the tradition around the biting of the medals. I find it strange. Like, ooh, be careful. Also, that's probably nasty. Question number three. What do the five rings in the Olympic symbol represent? Ooh, this is a tough one. Um, this is bad because I should know this like that. I think it's B, the second one. I think I want to go with the third option. The five continents where we have participants. Perfect. You got it. Oh, yeah. So close. (laughs) 
thing. Well, it is news to me. <laughs> I don't think we do much in Antarctica and the Arctic. You know what I mean? <laughs> Question four. How many ASU affiliate athletes will be attending the Olympic Games this year? Is it three, five, 12, or 20? Wow. Um, I know it's not three or five. I do know there's more than us three on the team going. I'm gonna go with 12. 12 is my number, so I always think it's lucky. And so <laughs> I'm gonna try to go with that right now. <laughs> I'm gonna say 12. I'm gonna say whatever the highest was one was. 20? 20. You got it, 20. <laughs> answer is 20. Oh, that's great. Well, that's even better. That's a bit more Sun Devil recognition out here. So that's good. Really, really good. I'm excited to hear that. So now I have to go research as to who all they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there will be 20 current, former, and incoming ASU athletes competing this year uh, across six competitions, and they'll be representing 14 different countries. And in total, that will make 200 ASU affiliate athletes. That's a nice feather in our hat. And uh, as you said, former and current and incoming, that's, you know, past, present, and future. As a son of also as a historian who happens to sit at the intersection of the history of college sports, American college sports, and the history of the Olympics, our American college sports have been globalized. And um, it's exciting if you want to make your country's Olympic team now, you know, we're the only place in the world that has this collegiate sports system. It's really cool that that it, it's happening in an educational setting. As a Sun Devil, like, we weren't always looked at to be the best. And when I was there, like, we were, and it was awesome. And we made the world recognize who we are and what Sun Devils have to offer. Being able to have that support from so many other people that have watched me succeed as a collegiate athlete to now come and be an Olympian. It's, it's just pretty cool and exciting. So just hopefully we can bring them a little bit more joy while we're out here. What is the longest a wrestling match has lasted in the Olympics? Is it three hours, six <laughs> hours, 11 hours, or 24 hours? Oh my gosh. I've been to some of those matches before, so I know that they can get pretty intense. I thought they had time on that. I'm gonna say three hours. I wanna go, I'm gonna go with 11 hours. 24 hours seems a bit much. That also would be amazing if that actually happened. I'm gonna go with 11. The answer is 11 hours. Oh my gosh. You got was it. It, it was, oh, it was 11, 11 hours, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see, like, those guys put in some awesome work, and I had a lot of cool wrestling friends when I was at ASU in the dorms, and so I definitely can see a couple of those guys going freaking hand to hand, let's go <laughs> on it for that long. <laughs> that yeah. sounds, oh my gosh, that sounds so terribly hard. <laughs> the question was how many spectators were still there. <laughs> What's one of the most memorable experiences you've had? I've thrown a few no-hitters. Um, gosh, I want to say my favorite one was um, at ASU right now. I think I hold the only like postseason no-hitter, or the first one at least. Um, my sophomore year, I want to say, we played a game at ASU, and um, the team scored a uh, one in the first inning, but it was on an air. And then other than that, there was no hits or anything. So I pitched a, no, a postseason no hitter. <laughs> so <laughs> kind of worked out, but I always jinx myself, I say, and I pitch like a million one hitters because I'm like, oh, somebody's gonna get a hit. Like I just kind of keep it in my head, like, oh, someone's gonna get a hit. So I bet you I have like a hundred one hitters <laughs> around here, so. <laughs> we, we have many ASU athletes going to the Olympic games this year. Um, what advice would you give them or a any athlete in general? I think for me, just enjoy the moment and be present. Don't make this game bigger than it is. Uh, this could be somebody's third Olympics. This could be, this is my first Olympics. Like just enjoy the time here and don't make things bigger than it is because we're here for a reason. We've earned it and we've been able to showcase our abilities and now it's just time to do it on a really fun, big stage. Have a great time. Enjoy the ride. Because it's the culmination of everything that you've done. It's actually the easiest part. And if you allow it to be, it's the most fun. Well, um, 
um, knowing some of my fellow competitors since I saw the list, um, one of them might have been a former student in my class. And so rather than smack talking a former student, I would just encourage Dallas, you know, it's, it's okay. Sometimes things just get a little bit hard and you, know, you can't really rise to the occasion like your former professor could. So to Dallas and my other competitors, um, maybe we can race on the track and then play some softball and jump in the pool and take this competition to sporting spaces.